All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Tonight is the night we are getting started. It's Monday, just got home from work, and we are gonna get started on the compound setup. So, last video we talked a little bit about this on what we're gonna be doing. We are going to be attempting, notice how I said attempting, because we've never done this before, so hopefully we don't scrap a bunch of stuff, but we're going to make a custom compound setup for my truck. I am pretty excited right now to finally have all this in front of my face. Um, I had to order, it's just basically just kind of a big deal to, to source all this stuff. Like I had to go into the depths of eBay to find all my parts, but um, I guess we'll start from the left and work our way over. So we have some heat wrap, obviously. Probably gonna wrap our hot pipe coming from the manifold charger to the atmosphere charger. So um, this is basically going to uh, just wrap that up and kind of keep the heat down. It's gonna be created off that pipe. We have some three and a half pipe here so we can create that and our interstage pipe. So that's what this is for. Uh, this is actually to make some pie cuts, the straight piece. And then our down pipe is going to be a four inch. Um, we have a five, five inch outlet and it goes down to four. I'm thinking about maybe just putting a clamp on that. That way you can, it's easier to get the down pipe out. We're gonna see, I want, I want this stuff to all be easy to work on if possible. Um, more four inch uh, mandrel bends for the down pipe and then I just had a spare down pipe laying around so I went ahead and grabbed that last night just so that way you know in case I need it I have some some bins um, we have our s400 outlet this is gonna go right here basically coming out of the turbo we have um, our four to three and a half boot this will go on the manifold charger and we have a hx40 to three and a half or four adapter so this will go on the back of the manifold charger and this is our t6 flange so we're basically going to weld this to three and a half pipe whenever we get there and this is what is going to mount to the inlet of the big atmosphere charger all right so turbo specs uh let's go ahead and uh get that figured out all right so turbo specs guys this is a smetting s475 so it's a 75 compressor uh, 96 turbine in a 115 housing. The manifold charger is a 63 compressor. What is it? A 63 compressor, 68 uh, exhaust turbine, and a 12 centimeter um, exhaust housing. So that is a little tight from what I've been told, but I mean, it's what I have. I'm going to run it. If it sucks that bad, I guess I'll buy another. Um, we, we basically just don't want to make a bunch of drive pressure and kill this turbo. Um, I've been told that the turbo that would be more likely to go first is going to be this one. Um, we could have went with a 132 exhaust housing, but um, the 115 should give us a quick spool, and that's what we want, guys. We want to be able to floor this thing, instantly light the chargers, and just, you know, lots of fun. 550, 600 horse in this thing is going to be an absolute blast. That should be plenty of power to keep me happy for a while. And you know, if we have to, um, we can we can you know once we have this this kit built, basically, we can play with turbo sizes and stuff. But we'll see how far we get into it. Um, I borrowed Buddy's Milwaukee um, bandsaw, so I'm going to be using this to basically cut my pie cuts. Put that put that pipe in the vise, and I can make my pie cuts with this. I don't have a bandsaw. I wish I had one, but this thing is an absolute ripper. This will cut right through that stuff. So. To start with, guys, uh, Mason is actually on the way over here. I am going to pull the downpipe off of the truck, and we're going to get that flange uh, ready to go. And what we're going to start doing is making our hot pipe. That's the first pipe we need to make. That's what's going to kind of hold the turbo. So, and we, we're also going to build some type of bracket to hold it once we get done. Don't worry about that. We're gonna we're gonna brace this thing, but. Um, I have a couple different ideas of, of how we're going to do that. I want it to be legit and clean if possible. But to start with, I need to take the downpipe off of the truck. So 11 mil there, clamp down there um, underneath the truck. And then we will start uh, bending or start making some pie cuts and, and see if we can start forming this pipe. Um, we're probably going to have to bend the trans dipstick over this way, like as far over this way as I can. Because what I kind of need to do is I need to basically do a 180 right where that is, come up. I don't think I can quite do a 180 right there. Maybe I can. I don't know. But to start with, I'm going to get the downpipe pulled off. Mason's going to be here very soon. So, yeah, let's get going on this thing. 
Alrighty guys, we got the downpipe pulled out of this thing and I went ahead and pulled a dipstick to try and bend the tube a little bit. Um, you can kind of see where I've got it bent before it's like over here and what I've done and, and I don't think I'm going to have any problem with, with making this work at all because I can cut the bracket off of it if I need to and then just weld it back on, basically re-support it. But um, for now, I've just kind of bent it as much as the bracket will allow me over this way. So basically we're going to come out this way and then do like a big old freaking kind of 180. Um, I think I'm going to clear right there. I think I'll be fine. So I'm not, I'm not going to bend it anymore right now. Um, we have this S400 to, like I've already got it dirty, um, or I'm sorry, HX40 to uh, three and a half inch adapter or four. It'll work with both, it says. So obviously that's going to go there with a the clamp. But what we need to start doing now is building this pipe to do the pie cuts. So um, now is where we really need to be, you know, very, uh, just take the time. Basically, I'm going to chuck this. Uh, Chuck this three and a half up over here and I'm going to try and use this straight and do my pie cuts out of this straight. I didn't order a ton of three and a half, but I think I can get this at the parts store. I don't think it's really that hard to get. It's just aluminized steel. So um, throw this in the vise and get some pie cuts made. So let's do it. All right, guys, Mason just got over here and he quickly informed me that we're not going to be doing the pie cuts. We're not going to be doing the pie cuts with this. He brought his chop saw because he knew I was already set up for failure. So we're gonna use the chop saw. It's got a real thin blade on. We'll have to do some cleaning, but I guess this way we can at least set up the angles correctly. So uh, yeah, we're gonna start making some pie cuts. All right guys, couple hours in. I just wanna show you guys where we're at right now. Um, we started with making the pie cuts and doing the, right now it's probably like a 160 degree bend right there. So we got that done and um, I already showed you guys I bent the dipstick out of the way. And now we cut one of these mandrel bends completely in half. And this guy will basically, we might have to, we're gonna have to do some trimming I'm sure somewhere, but we're getting pretty close to where um, this is actually honestly probably gonna work. Um, so now we just got the turbo hanging and we just got it hanging here cause it's really heavy to just sit there and hold it. So we're gonna basically get this thing to where we can bolt the exhaust housing to the flange and the drain is gonna be able to clear the fender well. The downpipe is gonna be able to make a turn and go down and the interstage pipe. And if we do wanna run some type of air filter, it's possible. It's probably just gonna be a stubby guy that sticks on here. We're not really gonna have much options running this side-by-side -side kit to do a like an air box. It'll just either get a screen and that's probably honestly you guys will probably never see a filter on this. I'll probably never put one on it. I don't drive this truck off-road. I don't plan on driving it in the winter. I just don't really care. And uh, so yeah, just kind of give you guys a glimpse from the front. This is obviously going to be clocked differently. Um, I think with doing it this way too, it really is going to make the interstage pipe really easy to make, like super easy to make that one. I think, yeah. Well, I mean, we're going to angle it though. I was saying, I mean, maybe we'll, but I'm, I'm kind of going for the look where the guys put them kind of at an angle So we're gonna see if we can get this pretty close to where it's gonna be and if so We'll do a little bit more trimming try to get this guy tacked up and uh, then we can finally finish weld the hot pipe So a little bit more time to work on it, but it's getting uh, we're actually making progress This is not going as bad as I thought it was going to I really thought this was gonna be a lot more frustrating But if you just take your time, you know, I, I gave myself all week in the shop with this thing to do this. So we're just moving along and get her knocked out. All right guys, it is now day two. I just got home from work. I've been thinking about this all day. I'm so pumped. I think today we're gonna have the turbo hot pipe pretty much wrapped up. Um, we had it a lot closer, but we weren't happy with after we tacked it. We tried to tack two pieces at once and that was a bad idea. You really just need to do one piece at a time. So we basically gotta mock this up again, find out where we want it, tack it, and then put it back on and then hold the charger up here to where we want it. Um, it is a little tricky with the outlet that I have. This guy's kind of long, so um, we'll probably end up having to cut this back here, butt a piece of four inch up to this. My main objective with this is this downpipe is gonna be like two pieces. Um, so I'm gonna take the factory one and cut it like up in here somewhere, like right here. And then the one is gonna just have like a 90 and it's gonna go down and kind of hook to it. So. Um, 
yeah, we got to try and be careful and salvage the uh, three and a half. I don't have a ton left. I have this, this, half of, another half of that. Or no, actually, I'm sorry, this is all I have. This right here, and then I have another full 180 mandrel. All right, guys, we have got this piece all tacked officially. Um, I tried to tack some of it, which is, was a bad idea, but um, we're gonna be able to save it, obviously. But, so, pot pipe is pretty much completely done, um, being tacked. Now we just have to get it all finished welded. Um, yeah, you guys can kinda see how she's gonna look. Trying to make it as pretty as we can, which is gonna get wrapped either way, so it doesn't really matter. As long as the welds hold and it doesn't leak, it's all that really matters. Slow down. Guys, day two is coming to an end, and let me tell you guys, I am excited right now. Now, disclaimer, we were halfway through TIG welding the hot pipe, and we realized that it was literally going to take the rest of tonight and probably into tomorrow. So we did MIG weld some of it. Um, it's aluminized steel. So it really, Mason's kind of having trouble getting it to weld. Um, if you guys are new to the channel, you know, you don't have to like comment down below how bad we suck at welding. And you know, I feel like that's just a big thing on YouTube is just shit talking about welding and you know, your welds suck and all this. And if we were, you know, claiming to be professionals and, and just absolute monsters at welding and that'd be one thing but we're not we're simply just two dudes out here making youtube videos in the garage having fun so don't don't leave any comments like that but just because there is a, a couple of welds on here that are not the best but i didn't want it to break i didn't want it to leak so a couple spots i went over it luckily this pipe you're looking at me through the window Luckily, this pipe is going to be heat wrapped. You're not going to see any of this other than the one spot where it meets the flange. And the flange, as you guys can see, is cherry. It looks pretty good. But back in that area, back in there, you know, there's definitely some MIG welds that are kind of like caterpillars. Um, I ground, ground those down and went over them twice just because I was worried that they weren't going to hold this pipe here where it's welded together. Pretty solid. Um, it was TIG welded for the most part, except for one spot where we had a big gap on the front and I MIG welded it. But just down in that area, guys, you know, I understand that that is not like the absolute best that it could have been, but this is our first time doing this, okay? We're not fabricators, we're not, we don't do this for a living, okay? So take it easy on us. But with that being said, look at what we freaking got done. We got the hot pipe completely done and the interstage pipe is just kind of chilling here right now. It's not really bolted to anything. It's just chilling there and it looks absolutely amazing. I think this is a really, really good looking setup. <laughs> yeah, I think it looks good. I am going to have to clock this oil feet, this oil line right here. That's, that's kind of one of the bad ones I'm talking about. Yeah, you guys see it. We all see it. Um, we're going to kind of clock this. Um, a little bit more this way so it's not gonna touch that pipe it's close to it but you can see it's there's some room there um, so yeah I just got to do a weld right here and then we'll have to get this bead rolled on the edge and that one will be good and then we have plenty of room for our drain down here I can stick my hand all the way underneath because the engine obviously you guys this engine is gonna torque it's gonna want to move and um, you know when it moves you don't as the engine moves this turbo is going to move everything on this turbo is going to move so we don't want this to like bang up against the fender well or anything and we got plenty of room i can stick my hand down here i can stick my hand under the exhaust housing i can stick my hand all the way under this flange where it comes out so tomorrow which will be day three we're going to do the um the cats the cats are back they heard us making a video um, we're going to do the downpipe. It's going to be probably cut it back here and just butt it up to this, or maybe just make it where you can make, take it apart in multiple pieces. Downpipe is going to be really hard to get in and out, um, even being two pieces. So probably going to, um, either cut this back or just make it slide in. And then it's going to have some pie cuts. It's going to go down. I'm going to move the AC. I think this is the, we're going to move this part of the air conditioning system up a little bit and kind of tilt it to the side. So that way we can retain our AC. 
this line twists and so does the one on the firewall it twists as well so yeah basically have a 90 go down and i already have the downpipe down there i cut it zoom in for you guys so you can see i cut the downpipe so we have to get to that guy down there that's where we need to basically build our pipe to i have another downpipe hx40 downpipe that would probably work better but i hate to cut this thing up because that's like a 200 dollars downpipe so really don't want to cut it but we may end up cutting it tomorrow just because i mean we want to get this done this is a priority oil feed i ordered a dash six oil feed um, so it's quarter i believe that's quarter pipe to dash six an it's going to have a 90 on it it's going to shoot over and uh yeah this is going to turn out hopefully really really clean i hope it works as well as i'm thinking it's going to and i hope this system really performs well and this is a really fun truck to drive as today we're on day three and we're currently tackling the downpipe um we did have i went to remove the ac um I went to basically bend some of the ac lines and didn't have a safety on the firewall and it shot off basically exploded some refrigerant all over the place absolute disaster but um we were able to work through that get everything cleaned up and i uh, have a hole cut here and because the downpipe where the downpipe is going to basically um go through here this the hump and the fender rail is just too tall so i had to kind of trim some of it out i'm going to file this down and probably put like a rubber grommet or something i don't really want this to be a sharp edge i've already cut my hands today working around all these sharp edges but if you guys can see way down in there I have, I knock that freeze plug into the engine oil pan, just knock it in there. There's not really, I mean, there's probably some way you can get it out, but I've been told you can just knock them in there and it's okay, so that's what I did. And I have a fleece uh, engine oil drain adapter, so that'll go to dash 10, and then I'll have to run a hose up here. My uh, other stuff, my um, lines did not come today. My drain fitting and my turbo drain fitting came, but my hard lines did not come so we're waiting on those we went ahead and just temporarily permanently mounted the um, intermediate pipe we got all this stuff tight we're trying to kind of mock it up how it's going to be so that way we can start on a support bracket support bracket is also going to suck to make along with the downpipe but that's what's next up on the list after we get the downpipe knock, knocked out. So um, we're probably gonna, like I said, come off this flange here, but I really don't know for sure yet. Um, but it's definitely gonna need some type of support. That right there, it would break the pipe. So uh, yeah, that's just kind of where we're at, guys. Not really a lot going on today. Just messing with this downpipe. I'll show it to you guys when it's all done, but right now it's kind of even impossible to explain what it is. The downpipe is gonna basically be two pieces. So there's no way that you'd be able to fish all of this up through there. So it's gonna basically, yeah, like I said, be two pieces. So yeah. Hi guys, we've ran out of time for the night, but what we have accomplished is like, like I said before, uh, the downpipe is kind of, it's just taking a really long time. This is really time consuming and yeah. So uh, basically you can see it comes out here does like a little bit of a 45 and then it's going to be two pieces so it's actually going to be connected right there which i don't know how that's going to work I, I think it i really hope it doesn't give us any problems but i'm scared that it's going to want to come loose so down underneath the truck i'm going to put an additional bracket in to kind of hold the downpipe the bottom part of it up so that way the weight of the exhaust is not hanging on any of this under the truck it's more or less supporting it up <coughs> so i plan on just doing a beauty clamp right here and it's just gonna be a two piece downpipe. In a perfect world, I would do a V-band, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it close enough to where a V-band's gonna work and it's not gonna be in a bind. So it's pretty freaking close, but the other piece of it is over here on the ground. Right here, it just needs to be finished being welded up. It's kind of like Another piece is over here. You guys can kind of see how that goes. It's like a 7.3 downpipe. So this piece goes from underneath the truck and it butts up to this end of it. Um, like I said, I, I really hope that, you know, it'll stay together and it won't freaking come loose right there. Um, and you can see what all we had to cut out of the fender well. This, the, the hump just went up too high, it was gonna hit it. So I did have to cut that out. 
Um, in a better world, I could have maybe um, had the turbo up a little higher, but I didn't know that that piece of the hump of the fender well was gonna be a problem. So you can see I just kind of traced out where the exhaust pipe goes and then just cut it out. It's not the end of the world. I'm gonna clean it up real good with a carbide bit and then put a rubber piece of like a rubber fuel hose or something in there just so that way you don't cut yourself on it. Or maybe I won't do that at all just because it's by the exhaust, but all this is gonna get wrapped. This is gonna get wrapped. This is gonna get wrapped. All right guys, as you can see, that is the exhaust wrap. We are getting it soaked. And that is because, and you can see the truck's in a different spot now. And that is because the truck is running. It's uh, able to start again. So, kill this fan real quick. We have, I got the oil lines and feed lines done last night. So basically, had to make these AN lines. AN lines are kind of tedious to make. They take quite a, quite a long time to do them correctly and get everything. Um, exactly how you want it. So I had to do some cutting up in the fender well uh, starting over here on the passenger side So I had to cut out for the oil feed line for it to be able to work Then I had to cut out for the downpipe, which I think I already showed you guys that but I got it cleaned up pretty good with my carbide bit so It's not the end of the world, but it is something that I had to do Once it's good and wet and we got that other the two exhaust pieces taken off we will wrap them in this. Hopefully this is enough. I may have to get more, but I'm just going to try and get the hot pipe done first and hopefully I have some left over and we can knock out the down pipe. These turbos are like 95% done. At this point, I'm going to close the video out. Um, we are five days into this video from start to finish and I am just exhausted and I'm taking tomorrow off. We're going to go out on the lake and I'm not working on this thing tomorrow. So I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll do it. work on it later at night, but I don't plan on it. I wasn't able to get a driving clip during the day, but I do have a little one right now doing some half throttle pull. So I'm going to go ahead and throw those in right now. These lights are so bad you guys literally can't even see. This thing feels like a freaking monster. I'm gonna do another half throttle pull. That was half throttle, guys building 40 pounds of boost like it's nothing. Wow. The headlights are so bad in this thing, guys, I can hardly see driving this thing at night. I need to get some new headlights for it. It's honestly dangerous how bad they are. But, um, so yeah, the only thing that we have left to do, I said 95% done, the only thing left to do is make a bracket. I'm gonna make a support bracket from this compressor to this flange. So it's gonna come off that, I'm gonna weld it. That's why I have these long bolts through here so I can basically weld, or I'm sorry, make a little um, bracket to come off this and it's just gonna be supported on that. I just drove it down the road without the bracket on it and the charger did not even move. The downpipe's still in the same exact spot. So um, that is strong how it is, but just to support it, you know, obviously we don't want this pipe to crack. It'll probably crack if we don't. We're gonna go ahead and get it supported. So. Without further ado, that's going to wrap up the end of this video. Be sure to leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know how you guys think this is going to perform. Be sure to subscribe so you can come back. We're going to do more videos on this, obviously, so you guys can see how this thing dries, how it performs. And yeah, we're going to put this thing to the test. But I can tell you guys right now, it is a night and day difference. It feels like I swapped a 6.7 into this thing. 
because the spool is instant. It's right there and that's awesome. <laughs> it's like so fun. I just, going back and forth down the road, I've already, I, I can already tell this is gonna be really fun to drive. Before, whenever this truck would hit overdrive, I just wanted, because it has kind of a smaller injector in it and whenever it would hit overdrive, I just wanted to kind of, I don't know, fall on its face and now it's like not even, I'm trying to check that out. Now it doesn't even hesitate when it hits overdrive, it picks up more boost and sets you back in the seat. So I'm pumped. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. See you guys on the next one.